Hey peoples, this is another movie review of Frozen 2. As always, I want to say thank you for listening. That really means a lot to me. For those who realize that I have not posted all week, life came and punched me in the face. And because of that, I couldn't watch a lot of movies and I had to skip a lot of screenings. But I will post five reviews between today and tomorrow to make up for the days that I missed. So I'm sorry for the lack of reviews, but I really appreciate you listening. And thank you if you're a new subscriber. Someone said congratulations on reaching over 50. I didn't even realize I had reached over 50, but I appreciate it. But anyway, on to the review. So we're back in the world of Frozen with Elsa, Anna, Kristoff, Olaf, and Sven. So recently Elsa's been hearing a voice coming from the distance, so she heads off on an adventure with her family and friends to figure out what's going on with this voice. That leads them to a hidden world and dives into their history, which involves their parents. And that's the movie. So I barely remember the first Frozen, but I think I liked it. It's been so long ago, so forgive me that I don't remember, but I think it was pretty good. But I do recall that Disney really overplayed it, especially with the music. I mean, they had marketing for everything with Frozen. They even had Frozen characters on water bottles. I don't know if that's gonna convince kids to drink more water, but it just seemed pointless. They were just sticking it on everything. But it was a craze that did not make really much sense to me because even though I did like the first one, I clearly remember some flaws within it, especially the storyline with Anna, which was wow. But anyway, now we're on Frozen 2. And this movie was an up and down for me. And I don't mean down as it was like horrible. I just mean either things were really good or it was kind of mediocre. And it was mediocre for a reason and I'll get into that. First off, the story. So the story of this movie is super predictable and because of that it felt kind of flat at times. Also, it's not original whatsoever. We've seen this story countless times before. There are even moments in the movie that remind you of other things. For instance, they mention the elements of fire, water, air, earth. And when they do that, my mind went straight to Avatar the Airbender. The way they even present it sounds like Avatar the Airbender. I don't understand why they would do that because they've had so many years, you think they could create something else. But I guess if they're aiming towards kids, they're thinking, oh, you've never seen this type of stuff, so we're gonna reuse it. But that was kind of disappointing. Also in the storytelling, it feels like they skip a couple of steps to get to the scene they want to get to or to get to the story plot that they want to get to. For instance, Elsa starts hearing a voice, so she starts singing, and while she's singing, she's using her powers and, you know, making cool looking things, and you're amazed and it's all pretty and that's nice, but then she does something with her powers that make it look like a bunch of crystals are floating in the sky. But then moments later, she tells her sister, I believe these were the words, I opened up the fifth element because there's water, fire, earth, air, and then another element, which I believe was spirit. But it just happens. There's no lead up to it of her saying, hmm, I want to open up another element and I'm going to work hard and figure out how to do it. She's just singing and then she just does it. And that just kind of felt like they skipped some steps. Also, there's a moment in the movie where Elsa, Anna, and Olaf are all together and they're going on this journey. Then all of a sudden they get to a point where it could be more dangerous and Elsa sends Anna and Olaf away. So we're on the journey with Anna and Olaf for a moment. So then when they skip back to Elsa, she's basically already at the place that they spoke about previously that they needed to get to, the place that would have been dangerous to travel to. And I was just thinking, did you just jump there? Was it just around the corner? I thought y'all had to go a little bit further it just seems like there was more of a journey that was coming up and they skipped all of that to get to the destination that she just needed to be at so that was kind of strange to me but moving on even though i had seen this type of storyline before i did really enjoy the themes in this movie and the lessons learned in this movie especially olaf's lessons and the things he's talking about that was very nice now the movie does feel slow at points and it makes it feel longer than it actually is and that might be just for me and anyone like me who has seen this type of storyline when you've seen certain storylines over and over again, it feels kind of sluggish and you're just trying to get to it because you know the end and you're like, okay, just hurry up because I know what's gonna happen. For someone who's never seen this, the pace might be okay, but for me, it just felt a little bit sluggish. And what added to that sluggishness was the songs. Now there are a lot of songs in this movie, a lot of songs. And this goes back to the overall up and down feeling that I felt throughout the movie. Some songs are really great and some of the ideas and visuals that they put with the songs are genius. They're really fun and some of them are directly targeted towards older ages. So that was cool, I like that. But some songs feel unnecessary and they make the movie feel bloated. Especially at the beginning of the movie, I felt like there were back to back to back songs. 
but instead of feeling like those songs actually served the film, it felt like they were putting them in there just so they could have a big soundtrack for this movie. Which was a super negative because that kind of thing happens a few times in this movie. And what I'm referring to is something that does not really make sense or really is necessary in the film, but you can tell they did it for monetary gain later on. So, like I said, a lot of songs are shoved into this, it feels like it's for the soundtrack for people to buy. There is a lizard character in this movie that's super cute, but you know it's just to sell toys. The existence of the character kind of makes no sense because it represents fire, supposedly, but that doesn't make sense because there was no character to represent wind, there was just leaves moving around, unless Disney plans on selling leaves, which I wouldn't put it past them. And another example is that at one point Elsa's clothes change, for no apparent reason, it doesn't serve the story. It's not like she goes and changes clothes. Like she goes into a specific location and they automatically change. They don't even explain it, it makes no sense. But you can tell all of this is just for merchandising so Disney can get money later on. And that kind of took me out of the film and that was really annoying. But to back up to my original statement about the songs, there are some really great songs in this film. Now I don't think there's anything close to the catchiness of Let It Go from the first movie, but there are some really cool bombastic ballads in this film that do have some catchiness to them. So for the most part, the songs that actually feel like they serve the story are really good. But I wanna move on to what your actual eyes will see, which is the animation. The animation in this movie looks incredible. It is so beautiful. The water looks real, the trees look real, the ground looks real, all of it looks like photorealism. Now if I'm being honest, sometimes it doesn't help the film, and when I say help, I mean as in it doesn't really mix well. Because the ground that they're standing on looks like actual ground. It looks like pebbles are on the ground, the rocks are real, like from real life, and it is mind blowing how great this stuff looks. But in contrast, then you have these really cartoon looking characters. So that was a little bit jarring. It seems like the way the ground looks in that type of animation would serve more if the characters look like something from the Animatrix, if anybody remembers that, where the textures of the characters are more close to real life versus cartoon looking. But that's less of a complaint and more of just something that I noticed that felt a little off. It still looks beautiful, but things just don't seem like they match up. One side thing that I didn't know if I should put in the story category or the animation category, but I really love certain details in this movie. For instance, in the beginning, they have this huge song where Anna and Elsa and every other character is singing, and there's a whole party and everything in the town, and near the end of the song, when everything's shutting down and the party is over, Anna is holding her heels in her hand. That was just genius to me. I was like, whoever decided to put her heels in her hand, it's a small thing, but it's a genius small thing. Also, when she's sleeping and she has drool on her mouth, all of those little things are just great visuals that they place throughout the film. In regards to the characters, everyone's great. Between the sisters, Anna was probably my favorite. Am I saying that right? I've, have I been saying her name like Anna the whole time? Is it Anna or is it Anna? Anna, Anna sounds right. But anyway, uh, Anna. I think it's Anna, I'm sorry if it's not, but she had the most enjoyable deliveries between the two sisters. Elsa's storyline kind of bored me because even though technically she was evolving throughout the film, Anna had more opportunities to show her character off and that's why I liked her more. Kristoff was enjoyable as well, but I think they ran his storyline into the ground because his whole thing was that he's about to propose and they kept going back to that well, but I think they just did it one too many times. Olaf stole the film and was the bulk of the comedic relief and every single line basically hit. Oh my goodness, he made me laugh so much. There is a scene where he reenacts everything that happens in the first movie. I cannot wait till that hits the internet and I can watch it over and over and over again. That was the best part of the movie. I was dying. But every single thing about him, I loved. He's better than he was in the first film, and I think they got more creative with him and just wrote better jokes for him. Because I remember that little short they had before, I believe, the movie Coco, and it wasn't great at all, and it felt like he just overstayed his welcome in pop culture. But this movie does right by him. I really like that. Also, I want to give a shout out to Sterling K. Brown because he plays a character in this movie, and he was great, as always, because Sterling K. Brown is amazing in everything. But that's about it. Overall, I will say this is an okay movie, so I do suggest going to watch it, but it did not blow me away. Even though I like the animation, the unoriginal storyline makes it kind of forgettable. But for the most part, I think you will enjoy the film. 
Now I'm about to wrap up, but I have one story based question in the movie, but it's kind of a spoiler. So I'll wait to the end. So if you stay to the end and you saw the movie, please answer this question for me because it, it kind of didn't make sense unless I didn't pay attention. But anyway, thank you for listening. It really means a lot to me. Thank you for liking, giving me thumbs up again. Thank you for subscribing. I have not been paying attention to the subscription whatsoever. I just do these because I like talking about movies with you guys. But yeah, thank you for subscribing and please continue to have a great day. God bless. Look forward to the rest of the reviews between today and tomorrow. I'll talk to you, I guess, in a little bit. Now, okay, so if you saw the movie, I need you to answer this question for me. So in the movie, we know that there are people in the woods and there are people in the actual town. I don't remember their names, I'm sorry about that. But anyway, so the dad tells a story about how the townspeople went into the woods with the woods people, whatever their names are, and then they turned on them and all this other stuff. But what doesn't make sense to me is that the mom, you find out later that she's from that area and that mixed the two different cultures together, right? But the dad originally tells the story like those people are evil and they turn on them, but the mom knew that she was not from the town. So what sense does that make? Like, shouldn't she be like, no, no, honey, my people aren't bad. Uh, we need to go investigate to see what happened. I didn't, I didn't understand that whatsoever. Unless the mom forgot where she was from and just believed the dad. Did I, did I watch this part wrong? Someone just explain that to me. Am I making sense? Uh, sorry if that was a mumbled mess, but have a great day. I'll talk to you later.